Hi friends, it's Mari here. I am so excited to share this card making process with you today. I had so much fun creating with this All In Create stamp set called Petal Power. This is stamp number 622 from All In Create. I'm going to be using this Artistico watercolor paper to stamp onto. I'm using a little bit of VersaFine sepia. Uh, I think it's vintage sepia actually ink to stamp out my image onto my watercolor paper using my Misty. You can see me stamping this out here. I just wanted, I didn't want black for the image. I just wanted it something that was going to be a little more subtle than bright like dark you know sharp black and so I'm all ready now to do a little bit of water coloring with my distress oxide reinkers. I'm going to take you through this process with some music and I'll catch you back once the painting's done. <music>
just some really simple watercoloring using my silver um, watercolor brush there. I am going to link up to all of the different products that I used in the description box below. And here you can see that I left that stamp in my Misty so that now I can put the stamped image and watercolored image back into my Misty again. And it's going to stamp in exactly the same spot. I inked it up with that same vintage sepia VersaFine ink. You can just see I'm stamping over it again. And what I want to do now is just put a little bit of clear embossing powder over top of that inked image. And that is going to create just this really nice glossy impression on the stamped lines. This is just a little fun technique that you can do. You wouldn't obviously have to do this step, but I just find that it really defines the lines of the painting really nicely and just adds a little bit of shimmery shine. On a mixed media card like this, this is just a really fun step. And I just really enjoyed adding this little bit of extra texture to my project. So I've added that, I've applied that clear embossing powder. Now I'm taking my heat tool, I'm going to melt the embossing powder and you'll just be able to see once I show you here up close when this is all melted how really pretty this looks and it just adds that little bit of extra pizzazz to the watercoloring and the stamped image so I just love by Pasha BK stamped image stamps from All in Create they are amazing I use a few of her stamps in this design now what I'm going to do is take my cutter B scissors and fussy cut around the edge of the um, shape and I'm actually just leaving a tiny little white outline around the edge you wouldn't have to if you don't like that look um, but I did want to just leave a little bit of that white detailing so I'm just being mindful of that as I'm fussy cutting just making sure that I turn my paper as I cut just allowing me to just really easily cut this image out it was not difficult to do at all and I just really love how this is going to allow me to use this then as a focal point for the front of the card and this image is just so stunning as all of uh, this lady's designs are for all and create they're just this artist is just amazing the designs are just always so stunning so love it now I did want to retain this little circle with the number three in it I thought that was just a really fun element to use as a, another little embellishment or element on the card so I'm going to just painstakingly cut out that circle Again, just leaving a tiny little bit of a white edge around and you'll see me use my distressing tool on these as I go through the process. Now what I'm going to do is take a little bit more of some distress ink. This is distress ink, not oxide. I think it's vintage photo, but I did show you there what that is. Um, as I, I'm sure as I go along here, I do show you the colors that I'm using. And here you can just see I'm using my fan brush to splatter. So I've watered that um, ink down and I'm using my fan brush here just to splatter some of that watered down ink onto my card panel for the front of my card. I will link up to the colors of oxide inks that I used for the watercolors as well just so that you um, know what I used there. Um, but just quickly I used um, Peacock Feathers, Saltwater Taffy, Picked Raspberry and Rustic, Rustic Wilderness Oxide Ink re for the watercolor coloring process. Uh, the paper that I'm using for the paper I used for that watercoloring was that Artistico that I showed you. This paper that I'm using here is actually some Vicki Booten Foundations paper, which I really love for using card making whenever I, I am going to be doing any type of mixed media. I wasn't sure how much mixed media I was going to be doing on the back ground or this part of the card so I wanted to use that type of paper just to make sure that it would take a little bit of moisture. Now this is another one of the by Pasha stamps. This is the um Hmm. I think this one is called Scripts. It's number 292. And again, just a really fun stamp. It's just got some really cool lines on it and etchings. I really love this. And what I wanted to do was stamp this out using some VersaFine Claire Nocturne ink. So you can just see that I've left the stamp on the backing, on the packaging. And I'm just going to go ahead and stamp down onto the this piece of cardstock just on the edge. So a little bit over to the right and a little bit on the top left and that's just going to give a little bit of detail on the edge of the cardstock. I'm just going to rough the edges up here with my tonic paper distressing tool and another thing I wanted to mention is I did use the Gina K Master Layouts to cut out my card panel here that I've um, stamped on for my, my front of my card. I used Master Layouts number 
Hmm, I didn't write it on my paper here, but I think it's number eight, actually. It is Master Layouts 8, and that has that layout set has a die for 5x7 card panels, and I wanted this to be a larger card, so this is going to be 5x7. This stitched um, panel that I'm working on right now is obviously not as large as five by seven, but it fits beautifully on a five by seven card base. So the master layouts allows you to do this stitched panel and then a little um, layering panel as well, which is super fun. And you'll see that as the process goes. Now this is some washi tape from my stash. I think it's a Vicky Booten um, washi tape from an older collection from Vicky. And I wanted to use a little bit of washi tape through the center just to add a little bit of detail. I wasn't sure how much of this I was going to cover up, how much of it would show. In fact, it just kind of peeks out from behind the different layers that I add to the front of this card. And that's fine. Um, you know, my uh, philosophy when I'm working with mixed media is just enjoy the process and whatever shows up when you're done uh, shows up and it, it's going to add some details and layers to your project that's going to look really cool. This is some washi tape from All in Create. I love that it's black and white. I just think it adds that really fun bit of pop. So you can see that I've done some tearing with that washi just to distress it and make it look a little bit kind of more grungy and textural. Torn it and added it in some layers again to my project. This is a paper from an old dictionary that I have that when I was a teacher, um, this old dictionary was in the library that they were retiring. And so I, you know, I grabbed it because I'm like, well, A, it's a dictionary I can use in my classroom. But it was kind of, you know, it was ratched. So I basically, um, when I retired, I took that with me and I am now using it as scraps for my projects. So just really love that it allows me to add a little bit of really fun paper. And you can see I've done a little bit of inking and um, I've also taken a little bit of brown paper from my stash. I It's just like a packaging and I just crumpled it up and I'm gonna add that as a layer in behind my uh, die cut piece here or my fussy cut piece, my stamped image as well. So you can just see how that's adding some really nice texture to my project. I'm going to add a little bit of liquid adhesive to get these layers stuck down. I don't want them completely adhered. I want them kind of a little bit loose. Now I've just taken a little bit of twine from my stash as well. I'm going to wrap that around my stamped image. I'm going to just tie that in a little bit of a knot and um, have that as a again a little bit of texture on the project. I'm going to snip the stamped image just a little bit so that that um, twine just kind of slides in so that it's just fits on there a little bit better and that will be covered up that little snip that I made in the the element actually gets covered up by the the twine when I tie this into a knot. So I'm just going to tie a knot there. I'll trim those extra little pieces of twine off once I get the knot Again, anything that you can add that adds just a little bit of texture to your mixed media card, I think just makes it look really cool. It makes it look really interesting. It just adds more depth to your project. This is some um, printed vellum from my stash. I will try to find this and link up to it in the description box below. Pretty sure I bought this from scrapbook.com. It is gorgeous. Uh, it's always nice to have vellum um, that's got some print on it or text something that's just going to be able to add some layers to your projects and I just love adding vellum because well it's beautiful and it's translucent so it just adds just that really little bit of mystery to your project I wanted to tear it again for more texture you'll see I'm just going to rough up the edges a little bit here as well I'll add that on to my layers and I just love how that looks so I'm just going to kind of fiddle around with it until I get um, it's sort of like the right thickness and the right length and just I wanted it to be not covering everything up but just sort of like the right length to or the right width to just add that little bit of lovely texture to this layering. Again I'm going to add a little bit of adhes liquid adhesive. I'm using my Studio Light liquid adhesive there. You can use any type of liquid adhesive that you have in your stash. And just loving how that's looking and how this uh, piece is going to look over top of that. 
think it's just so pretty and I'm ready to go on to the next step at this point. Okay, so at this point I was looking at my card and I decided I wanted to add more texture. So this is a die, die number 13 called Bursting Buds. I've die cut that out now out of some white cardstock. You can just see this is just gorgeous. It's such a gorgeous die. And it just adds the most delicate and pretty bit of detail behind my stamped image here. So all I did was just, I just attached it. I just adhered it down to the other layers that I have on my card. And that's all I did. So super easy. Um, really love these dies from uh, All in Create. If you ever get a chance to purchase any of these dies, grab them because they're so versatile. You can use them on art journaling pages. You can use them on cards like this one. Um, you know, if you're doing some fine art, you're doing a collage, for example, on a canvas, you can add these to that. Like, they're just really magnificent dies. They just make such beautiful pieces for any type of project, really. And now I wanted to make sure that I added this piece back onto my card or onto my card because I haven't added it yet. I wanted to add it, add it with some dimension as well. So you'll just see me here adding some dots. It doesn't matter if the foam dots are black. That's not going to show through my watercolor paper. And I'm going to add a little bit of liquid adhesive onto these foam dots as well because I really want this to attach well, to adhere well to all of the layers that I have here on this card. So you're going to just see me here grabbing that Studio Light um, adhesive and I'm going to uh, go ahead and attach this on. Now as I'm doing that I just want to tell you to, I'm go I am going to try to um, link up to all of these different products. I know that I can add a clickable link to the All in Create products, whether or not I'll be able to find the exact ones or if they'll be in stock, I'm not sure, but I definitely will do my best to do that. I'll add those to the description box below and those will be wherever possible affiliate links. So that means that if you shop with those links, if you click them and make a purchase, then I do get a small commission at no extra cost to you. So it does really help me bring these free videos to YouTube if you do choose to do that. This is another by Pasha All in Create set called Basic Sentiments. It's number 630 and I love this stamp so much. You can just see here I've uh, inked it up with my Versifying Claire ink again, which is just again that really nice crisp black ink stamps out so nicely I put the stamp on a block and now essentially I have this whole um, sheet of sentiments that I can just cut apart now I'm using my Tim Holtz scissors I love these scissors if you haven't splurged on these yet grab some because they're so good and I think in most places they're back in stock again I will link these up in the description box but it just makes cutting out a sentiment so easy and when it's a, a grungy looking card like this with with lots of that texture um, that I'm going for here this does not have to be cut perfectly straight you can take your distressing tool distress the edges again you can just take your finger and do that or use your scissors whatever and now I'm just going to add a little bit of that frayed burlap distress oxide that's I just grabbed it because it was handy my um, brush was handy for that so just blend a little bit of the ink on the edges of this paper and I love this um, the paper that I used here is just I think 110 pound white cardstock so it's got a little bit of um, you know body to it it's heavier and it does allow you to just kind of like be a little bit rougher with it you know and it, it's not delicate in any way and I'm just going to rough that up and get that a little bit of color on it and I'm going to grab a little bit of foam adhesive this is a adhesives by 3L foam strip so this is a an adhesive that comes in the strips already for you to use on a sentiment like this which is super handy so I'm just using some uh, scissors here to trim that off and another thing I wanted to mention about Tim's scissors is they're Teflon coated so things don't stick to them like um, sticky doesn't stick to them like other scissors that aren't coated so I really love that about those scissors too now I'm just going to place it this onto the front of my card you could put this at the bottom if you wanted. Um, I wanted to kind of put it in a place that I thought wouldn't detract too much from the beautiful details on the different areas, the layers. Now I wanted to just take some white splatter and my favorite white splatter, hands down right now and has been for probably about a year or so, is the Dina Wakely White Gloss uh, Spray. You can just dip your brush right into the bottle and 
splatter it with whatever splattering tool you have. And I wanted to add some sequins. I just grabbed some random sequins from my stash. Some are little flowers. Some are kind of like a little bit of a corally color to go along with coral flower. And um, I've also got some pink fresh gems on here that are kind of in a goldy brown kind of a tone. Just wanted to add a little bit of a bling, a bit of bling and sparkle and shine without it being tacky. You know, I didn't want to add too much tacky to this because it's it's looking pretty funky and cool right now. So I didn't want to tackify it, if you if you will. I don't think that's a word, but I'm just using my Marvy jewel picker to pick up some sequins and some little bits that I've added. And I used a little bit of Nouveau glaze to adhere those on. Now I'm ready to go ahead and add this, uh, some adhesive to the back of this. I'm using, there I just grabbed my Honeybee Stamps precision tip glue tube. So just whatever, I have probably five different kinds of liquid adhesive within arm's reach here. So that's just what I grabbed, which I love that glue. What I love about it is it's really easy to add onto a project and slide the paper around to get it into place. It kind of has some wiggle room, if you will. And so I'm just adding that on. I added the, the card front onto the craft layer. So I used that um, Master Layouts 8 to cut the layer around the the, the very front of the card, that stitched uh, front. And now you can see I've added it onto a five by seven card base and the card is finished. And I just love how it turned out. Thank you so much for joining me today. Please make sure that you like and subscribe and I'll see you soon. Have an amazing day, friends.